Hello interwebs, I hope you're all doing well. So for today's video, I wanted to circle back around to an issue that I touched upon in my review of the Star Wars TV series The Mandalorian, specifically its fifth episode of its second season. Namely, where I talked about in that review video my reservations at the casting of actress Rosario Dawson, who is playing my favorite Star Wars character of all time, Ahsoka Tano, in the character's first ever live action appearance in that show. Now, my reservations around Miss Dawson all stem from the fact that, at least at the time, that I was still assuming that she was facing allegations of misgendering, dead naming, and physical assaults uh, of a transgender man who was a former employee of her family. As well as the fact that I was honestly a little bit saddened by the fact that there was so little mainstream discussion of the accusations both back when Dawson was cast, when the allegations were uh, still you know, going through the legal system, and also when the episode aired last week. Now. After discussing my reservations and feelings on that situation in the review, I was made aware of some updates to the case, namely that many of the lawsuit charges have been dropped, as well as the fact that Rosario Dawson addressed the allegations briefly but directly and denied them uh, while reaffirming her support of the transgender community while she did a recent interview with Vanity Fair about her appearance as Ahsoka in The Mandalorian. Now, for many who commented on my initial review of The Mandalorian, as well as Elsewhere, a lot of people stated that this information was enough for them to be able to set aside their reservations towards Dawson surrounding this issue, which I 100% understand and get. I by no means have any issue with people who feel that this information is enough to alleviate their concerns. I, however, if I'm being honest, while I feel I am leaning towards uh, feeling better about the situation, I still hold some hesitation and reservations in my heart about Rosario Dawson being in The Mandalorian. And I wanted to make this video both to clear up my point of view on it, as well as some of the information that I left out in my initial review and, and address also why I still personally have some concerns even despite the new information and the uh, dropped allegations. So let's dive into this whole discussion and have a talk about why I still have issues with Rosario Dawson and the alleged incidents of transphobia. I will say, before we get started, to make entirely clear before people jump down in the comments in case they don't watch this whole video, the goal of this video is not to say that Rosario Dawson is awful and we should cancel her and ruin her career. Instead, my goal with this video is to try to lay out all the facts for those who may not know them, and then explain my own complex emotions on that situation, which to be clear are not in any way definitive of anything, but you know, as a human being, as a complex person, or at least I like to pretend that I'm complex, I still feel that there's a lot of issues that I am wrestling with when I look at this information and I look at Dawson's appearance in The Mandalorian. So as always, you know what I'm about to say, nuance is a thing. And on that attempt to be awkwardly funny, I do want to say this. Um, obviously, there will be explicit discussions of alleged transphobia and physical assault of a transgender person. So for those of you who don't wish to hear those topics being discussed, I totally understand if you need to sit this video out. But with all that out of the way, let's dive in. Now, for those of you who don't know her, Rosario Dawson is an actress who is known for her appearances in the movie Sin City, the musical Rent, as well as her multi-show spanning role in the Netflix Marvel TV shows as Claire Temple. Dawson has also, along with her boyfriend and former presidential candidate Senator Cory Booker, have long since spoken out against transphobia, as well as for LGBTQ issues and supported LGBTQ organizations. And Dawson herself has even publicly identified as LGBTQ. However, in October 2019, one Dedrick Finley filed an anti-discrimination civil lawsuit against Rosario Dawson, as well as members of her family. Finley, who is a transgender man and who works as a handyman, and who also was a longtime friend of Dawson's family, had been asked by Dawson and her family to move from his home in New York to Los Angeles in order to help renovate Dawson's home. After moving to Los Angeles, Finley came out to Dawson's family as transgender and told them his name and pronouns, he, him, his. As quoted from an article from Out Magazine, quote, In the months after coming out, Finley claims his gender was repeatedly denigrated and disregarded by family members. While working on the family's property, he claims Rosario's father would scream at him in his face saying, A man wouldn't work like this, and you only think you're a man. But when he brought the issue to the actress's attention on several occasions, Finley says she didn't take action to stop it. 
Instead, Finley says Dawson responded by telling him to handle it himself. Quote, you're a grown woman. He says she told him. Finley says the experience made him wonder whether or not he should have come out at all, despite what he thought was a great job opportunity. It was a chance to be my true self, he says. I truly thought I'd have a more supportive reception. I thought maybe it's too much and I felt shame around it. Having to correct when I was misgendered, I would sometimes second guess coming out, like maybe I shouldn't make waves. Eventually, however, Finley claims that the Dawson family hit financial troubles, causing his hours to be cut and eventually to having none at all. And he was asked to move out of the apartment given to him by the Dawson family. Worried about finding housing due to the housing discrimination against trans people both within the United States and around the world, Finley told out, quote, playing games with people's housing is pretty awful. Finley also claimed the family resorted to various illegal tactics to get him to leave. And eventually they showed up one day in April, 2018 at his apartment. In the lawsuit, Finley alleges that Dawson threatened to kill him and his cat. When he supposedly threatened to call the police, Dawson's mother allegedly dragged him through a bedroom window. According to the court documents, quote, once Mr. Finley was lying helpless on the ground outside, Isabel, who is Rosario Dawson's mother, who is substantially larger than Mr. Finley, got on top of Mr. Finley's body and began punching him. While beating Mr. Finley, Isabel screamed, you're not so much of a man now, which was a clear and denigrating reference to Mr. Finley's gender identity. So if the allegations are true, it's pretty disturbing stuff. And while it's not clear from that description that the alleged assault was instigated by the fact that Finley was trans, certainly transphobia played a role in the supposed events. Again, only if they happen as described or even at all. However, Derek's attorney stated to the LA Times, quote, the aggression that was shown to him by members of the Dawson family and the nature of that aggression leads one to think that motivations were transphobic. In November 2019, Finley spoke to Out Magazine about his decision to pursue a lawsuit, stating, quote, it was a really hard decision because I'd known them for so long. They were my only support out here. Finley also stated that he was worried about finding work because of the lawsuit. Quote, I don't really know anyone out here in California and came out on Isabel's word, having left my support system back in New York City to relocate here. For her part, Dawson did call the accusations baseless, but did not comment much beyond that at the time. And that's basically where things were when Rosario Dawson was cast as Ahsoka Tano in early 2020. At the time, while the lawsuit was mentioned around the time of her casting, it wasn't really a main focal point of discussion when she was cast, which led many in the transgender community as a whole to feel like the allegations against Dawson were being completely ignored, perhaps due to the fact that the violence allegedly happened to a trans man and thus was not taken as seriously by media and the larger public discourse. And for me personally, I cannot say if that was true, but I will say that it would not be the first time that accusations by a member of the transgender community against a famous person were mostly ignored by the general public, even ones that were much more substantiated than this one. So it was not an irrational concern to believe that this is what was happening here with Miss Dawson. However, in August of 2020, Finley voluntarily withdrew 18 of the 20 accusations against Dawson, including the claims of misgendering and discrimination and Finley's lawyer has supposedly left the case. However, the final two claims that do still stand out of the original 20 are the ones dealing with physical assault. So to reiterate that, there are still accusations of physical assault against Dawson and her mother scheduled to go to court as of the filming of this video. Finally, just to wrap this all out, just this week in an interview with Vanity Fair about her role in The Mandalorian as Ahsoka Tano, Dawson spoke about the allegations, stating, quote, Well, firstly, I just want to say I understand that and why people were concerned and are concerned. I would be too if I heard some of those claims. But I mean, as we're seeing right now in these past months and just recently, actually the truth is coming out. Every single claim of discrimination has been dismissed by the person who made them. And as you've said, the fact that this is coming from someone I've known since I was a teenager, the better part of my life, and who my family was trying to help as we have many times in the past, it really just makes me sad. But I still have a great empathy for him. The reason that all of the discrimination claims were dropped is because they didn't happen. I was raised in a very inclusive and loving way, and that's how I've lived my entire life. I've always used my voice to fight for, lift up, and empower the LGBTQA community, and used my platform to channel trans voices in fiction and nonfiction work that I produced and directed. So I feel the record is really clear. So that's where we're all at in terms of just sheer facts of this case. Now, let's talk a little bit more about how I and maybe some of you out there may be feeling on this. As many of the people in the comments of my Mandalorian video stated, and as I've seen in quite a few other online spaces like Twitter and elsewhere, for many, the knowledge that the 18 of the 20 charges were dropped, coupled with Dawson's comments, was enough to convince them that Dawson is innocent of, at the very least, harassing Finley in a transphobic manner. 
It can also certainly be viewed that Finley baselessly made these claims in order to lash out and pulled them when he found out that they wouldn't go anywhere. And with that possibility on the table, some people say that it makes them feel more comfortable with Dawson's casting in The Mandalorian and with her career going forward. And honestly, I totally understand that and do not begrudge anyone that opinion. This whole video is not here to dictate to you how you should feel about this whole situation. I can only say and speak for what I feel about the situation. And for me, looking at all this information, I feel slightly differently about that. Because, you see, first off, there's still two suits being filed, the ones of physical assault. So that in and of itself is concerning and should not be dismissed. But I also know, on top of that, what it's like to be a publicly visible transgender person. I am just a trans person making silly little videos on YouTube about Star Trek, and in almost every single video, I receive numerous comments of people attacking me transphobically, saying things like, I'm an ugly man, or I'm mentally ill for being transgender, or many times worse things. I've even gotten much, 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 much worse things in my DMs, both on Facebook and on Twitter. And I get those with every single video. And that's on videos that I don't even talk about anything to do with trans issues. So that being said, Knowing that experience for me, I cannot imagine, regardless of if the claims were true or not, what Finley must have received in terms of harassment and abuse for his claims against a high-profile actor who has been cast not only in Star Wars, but Marvel as well, two of the biggest franchises that exist today. I mean, one need only look at the harassment of Star Wars actress Kelly Marie Tran to see evidence of how toxic certain elements of the fandom can become when targeted at a member of a minority community. So in light of that, as well as the fact that his allegations weren't really being heavily discussed by the mainstream as he battled a powerful actress with an even more powerful boyfriend, Cory Booker, I think it's entirely possible that he dropped the charges, especially the charges of harassment, which would be much harder to prove as it becomes a he said, she said situation. It's perhaps, and I say perhaps, telling that the two allegations that stayed around, the physical assault charges, are the ones that could be best backed up by evidence like hospital records, which Finley would have because he claimed that he had gone to the hospital after the alleged assault. Also, I know, and Dawson herself said this, well, why would Dawson be transphobic when she's been an outspoken LGBTQ advocate and is part of the community? And why would she do this especially towards a longtime family friend? Well, there are several possible reasons. And I can only really talk about this from my personal experience. I had, a long time ago, a college friend who I came out to as transgender and who was a roommate of mine uh, for a little bit of time. Um, this friend was, you know, expressly supportive of the LGBTQ community publicly and he accepted me as a trans person. He, you know, used my, my name that I told him, he used my correct pronouns, all of the, the right stuff. Um, in terms of, you know, accepting me as trans. However, one day when we were um, roommates, uh, we got into an argument. And he ended the argument by dead naming me and saying, basically, he wished that I was still a boy because the boy me would have understood him. And then he left. That's how he ended the argument. You see, in the moment, in order to win an argument rather than addressing the issue at hand, he chose to hurt me by being transphobic. He did it because he knew it would get under my skin. He lashed out because he knew it would hurt me at a moment where he felt hurt, even when I, at the very least, I felt that I had only been trying to deal with the issue at hand and hadn't been assaulting him and hadn't been insulting him or attacking him. You see... When things become heated, especially around stuff like money, which my argument with my friend was about, um, sometimes people lash out just to hurt somebody, just because they know how to. Even if they know it's wrong, even if they know it's, you know, has nothing to do with what's being said. Just because someone is supportive of LGBTQ people or an advocate for LGBTQ people or may even be an LGBTQ person themselves or may even be transgender, does not mean they are incapable of being transphobic, especially in private and especially in heated arguments and especially in heated arguments over money, which the situation with Finley allegedly was about. So you can see why, while I am heartened by the fact that Dawson is publicly um, supportive of trans people and the LGBTQ community, how that doesn't completely wipe away 
the possibility that she would be transphobic in any way, especially during a heated argument with someone that she knew personally and knew how to hurt. That all being said, I want to be expressly, expressly, expressly clear about this. This is all supposition on my part. I'm not saying that this is what happened. I'm not saying that this is even what is likely to have happened. But I say it all because it's just as much a supposition as assuming Dawson's innocence, at least with the information that we have. The reason I describe these potential scenarios is not to say that this is what happened because I don't know. No one can know for 100% certain right now outside of Finley, Dawson, and Dawson's mother. From the information that we have as a public, either interpretation or even a mix of the two that Dawson is completely innocent or completely guilty are both perfectly valid interpretations. And determining which one is which is exactly why we have courts of law to begin with anyways. So I'm not here to condemn Dawson or say that we should somehow cancel her or her career should be destroyed. What I am saying is that I personally, when I see her being cast in things that I'm excited about or I watch a project that she appears in, that I, as a transgender person, feel uncomfortable. And you know what? Maybe that's completely unfair to her. I completely acknowledge that. In fact, it's definitely unfair to her if she didn't do anything wrong. But I know myself that I can't divorce myself from feeling uncomfortable. Again, I know that might be unfair to her. I can acknowledge that my feelings might be unfair, but you also have to acknowledge that they might not be. And you also have to acknowledge that they're my feelings, that they are what I'm feeling. Even, even if I don't want to be feeling them, I am feeling them. And I also know that I am not the only person both within the transgender community and out of it who may feel this way. So the point I want to end on here is, you know, I'm not here to say let's cancel Dawson. I wouldn't even cancel her if I could, you know, push a bad, big red button and completely cancel her. Uh, if I could do that, I wouldn't. I think if I made anything clear is that I, as a person, always try to give as much credence and nuance as possible to a situation. So to call Dawson a horrible person or to cancel her over this would be me presuming too much with too little information. And that would be wrong of me. But also, as a trans person, knowing that the possibility exists that she may have done these things means that I cannot feel completely comfortable watching her, which sucks. I acknowledge it sucks. It sucks as a fan of Star Wars. It sucks as a fan of, you know, the Marvel TV shows. Uh, it sucks as someone who liked Dawson uh, before these allegations. And it sucks even more so if the allegations aren't even true. But I cannot know that and I can't change what I feel. And so ultimately, I have to be true to that and validate that about myself and just acknowledge it. I'm not trying to attack Rosario Dawson. I'm not trying to destroy her career. I'm just saying I feel uncomfortable. And I would ask that you acknowledge and validate that about me or in any of your friends who may be feeling similar. You know, if you see people attacking Rosario Dawson or harassing her or claiming that we know definitively that, you know, she did these terrible things, that is incorrect and wrong and we should state that and call that out. But if a friend's just saying, I feel uncomfortable watching Rosario Dawson be in things, that's valid. And I can't say it's not. But I also, just to be fair, I also fully accept if you don't feel uncomfortable watching her. I totally validate that too. You know, I and this channel rarely offer definitive solutions in situations like these, and I don't offer you one now. All I want you to do, as I ask you to do in most of these situations, is that you don't just wholesale dismiss the situation because of X, Y, or Z. Because of one specific fact that you're like, you can point to and say, ah, that's true, so I'm going to assume the rest. Don't do that, because I think we do that too much. What I want you to do, at the very least, is take some time to grapple with the situation. That's what I always ask you to do, to grapple with the facets of it, the nuance of it, the, the depths of it. We all too often, and understandably so, because that's what humans do, try to ignore or bypass uncomfortable situations, and instead just try to come to a consensus either one way or the other. That's what humans do. We like to have our binaries. We like to have our black and white, our rights and wrongs. But if you're someone who wishes to continue to watch Dawson's work, which I am also someone uh, who is planning to watch Dawson's work, if she comes back as Ahsoka in this show or another show, I plan on watching it. 
I'm not saying I'm not going to. I just ask that you take a moment to sit with this and let yourself be uncomfortable. A situation as complicated as this deserves at least that. Thank you so much for watching. I know that this one was a little bit harder, but I wanted to be true to the uh, harder realities of this situation. Um, so yeah, I like I said, I just ask that you grapple with it. Um, beyond that, don't forget to, you know, subscribe uh, as we like to grapple with hard discussions and hard topics, both within pop culture and geekery and the transgender community here on this channel. That's all right here. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let's try and keep it civil. I don't mind if you disagree with me or are, are upset at me for some of my opinions in this video. I totally understand and get it. It's a heated topic, but let's just try and remain respectful uh, of both myself and others who may be in the comments as well. And then the final thing I will also say is don't forget, if you do want to support me, I have a Patreon page. You can get yourself cool perks like your name and videos and access to my exclusive Star Trek Enterprise podcast. Um, that's all there for you if you want to support this me or this channel. Uh, beyond all of that, I hope that you, as always, live long and prosper. Thank you to all of my patrons this month, but especially Amanda Ronye Idanya, Catherine Lambeth, Ashley Allen Bokikio, Miranda Janelle, Eli Bergmas, Ashlyn Solstice, Michael D., Greg Gillum, Stephen Kleinard, Ulysses the Pagan, Randy Thompson, Munir Amlani, Chamomile T., Stefan Schuhart, Wellington Marcus, Boyd and Mary Beth Earl, Wayne Twitchell, Ish the Mad, Buttoneer, Roar, Christina Dalliance, Dominic Noble, John Steele, Michael Beam. She sells seashells by the seashore of Bajor. William Stewart, Gavin Robinson, The Sir Spence, BBD, Hannah F., Nathan Olson, Jason Knott, Andrew Jorgensen, Chris Brown, Jasmine, Maeve, Bree Beecher, Sabraxis, Skylar Gray, Nathan Steele, Jane Packard and Chloe Dollar, Wen Dizzlebizzle, Gretchen Badger, Geek Filter, Bush, Celestial Dawn, Din, Sarah Bastam, Polly Mina, Jacob Tovar, Piston Twisted Garage, Lily, Jean Methune, Andrew Lamori, Lisa, Zone One Librarian, Michael Hardy, Corey Honkinen, and KT Dunn. Thank you so much to all of you. You're quite literally making my dreams come true, so I, I cannot tell you how thankful I am.